Jets OTAs were open to the media today. I'm going to give you the key takeaways and five bullet points. If you appreciate it, a thumbs up is an easy way to show it. For starters, Robert Sala addressed the injuries of Aaron Rodgers and Brees Hall. Aaron Rodgers, I don't even know if you really call it an injury. He tweaked his calf a little bit. I think if the Jets were in the regular season, he'd probably be playing. Uh, but he's going to be limited for throughout this week. And Sala said he should be back to 100% next week. He was seen wearing a sleeve on his right calf. Brees Hall. Robert Sala expressed optimism that he's going to be ready for week one, said he's hitting 22 miles per hour on the GPS. So it looks like the straight line speed is back. Hopefully the cutting and the agility is back as well. And it did happen early enough in the season, and Brees Hall is so young and such a 1% athlete. You're more optimistic about him than you might have been about uh, some different players coming back from an ACL. And he is uh, his return to 100% or however close he gets to that is one of the biggest variables on this team. Brees Hall on a touch-per-touch touch basis, was as efficient a running back in the NFL last season, factually. And he's going to be huge. Robert Sala also addressed Corey Davis's absence. He and his wife are expecting their second child, so congrats to Corey. And he said, quote, nah, we love our current group when asked about acquiring DeAndre Hopkins. Now they did also love their current group enough to visit with Odell Beckham Jr. and offer him a contract. And they did love their running back group and said they weren't going to add anybody and then drafted Izzy Abanacanda. So I don't know how much stock he put into Sala saying uh, things about his position groups. He loves everybody. Every, everyone on his team is a Hall of Famer. Uh, but it does seem unlikely that Hopkins is going to go to the Jets. Actually, I find it more unlikely that he's going to go to a, a contender. Uh, if he really wants that money, that $18 million, I don't think any the Chiefs or the Bills or Jets or whoever you might say are going to give that to him. He's probably going to have to get overpaid, and good teams usually don't overpay for players. Um, and I like Corey Davis too, you know, but you're always looking to get better. Obviously, so are the Jets, which again is why they hosted Otto Beckham Jr. And I ha have a tough time believing they would have signed Otto Beckham Jr. and kept Corey Davis. So all due respect to coach, a little bit of lip service there. Speaking of another wide receiver, Denzel Mims, Robert Sala said he's competing his butt off and has a real chance to make the roster, which sounds kind of a uh, little bit of a backhanded compliment. I wonder if this is the year where Mims is finally traded because, yes, there is part of me that feels like there's still some untapped potential. He's not a wide receiver one. He's not a wide receiver two. That ship has sailed. We got to just live in reality uh, and only be homers to a certain extent on draft picks we liked. I did love the draft pick of Mims. But I do think he can be a wide receiver four or five in the league somewhere. But on this Jets roster this year, Okay, where is he in the pecking order of just weapons, of pass targets? He's not going to get more targets than the top five receivers all the way down to Cobb. He's not going to get more targets than the top two tight ends. Maybe not even more than Jeremy Ruckert. He's not going to get more be more of a featured weapon than the first two or three running backs. So he's your 10th weapon. Uh, and the Jets have guys like Jason Brownlee, TJ Luther, undrafted free agents. So at what point do you say, okay, is this 10th weapon on a one-year rental, is that worth just getting a six-round pick and bringing in another rookie next year uh, who we can have and develop for a few seasons? Maybe it's the end of the road uh, for Mims, which is kind of a bummer, but is what it is. Dwayne Brown, uh, Robert Sala uh, addressed the tackle situation again briefly and said, Dwayne Brown, quote, does not feel like he is entitled to anything, unquote. Obviously, a subliminal message to Mekhi Becton, who feels, although he hasn't started a full season worth of games in the NFL, that he should be handed the left tackle spot over Dwayne Brown, who will likely get Hall of Fame votes and played with one arm last season. Jeremy Ruckert finally uh, has had a solid last few OTAs, according to Connor Hughes, has been routinely getting behind Jets linebackers. I like to see that from Jeremy Ruckert. I wonder if the Jets are going to get creative and carve out a role for him, even though they do have Conklin. And Uzama, I'd like to see him on the field a little bit, maybe in some of those H-back roles that they used Travon Wesco in previously. But there it is, and uh, we'll talk all soon.